In this video, I want to introduce the idea of cell signaling. So, what is cell signaling? Well, it's basically the idea behind how extracellular signals, which are signals that come from the outside of the cell, uh, things like hormones, how they can trigger a cellular response. So, if something comes from the outside of the cell, comes over to a cell, causes that cell to respond in a certain way. So, the type of extracellular signals that we're going to be concerned with are hormones. So, what is a hormone? A hormone, first and foremost, is an intercellular messenger. They travel between cells. More specifically, the hormones are released from a ductless gland. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. A ductless gland. So, this part of the definition is really not too important for our sake, but it is specific to the definition of a hormone. Um, another aspect of hormones is that they're tra transported in blood, in the blood, from an endocrine cell in one portion of the body to a target cell somewhere else in the body, usually far away. And that target cell has a receptor that is specific to that hormone. Find that hormones are very specific as far as what they bind to. So now, where is this receptor? The cell has a receptor, but where is that receptor? Well, the answer to that question, in order to answer it, we have to think about what hormone is actually coming over to bind. We have to think about what is the class of that hormone. It depends on the class of that hormone. So there are three classes or three types of hormones, steroid hormones, peptide or polypeptide hormones, and amino acid derivatives. Now what we're going to be basically concerned with is whether this class is polar or nonpolar. In the case of steroids, they are nonpolar. Steroid hormones are nonpolar, and some examples of steroids hormones are uh, the sex steroids, estrogen and testosterone. The second class, peptide or polypeptide um, hormones, are just basically like protein hormones or, or sequences of amino acids. And generally speaking, these are polar uh, hormones. So examples are, that we're actually going to talk about are insulin and glucagon. The third class is amino acid derivatives, and these are usually also polar, and um, it depends on obviously the amino acid they're derived from, and epinephrine is an example of that, also known as adrenaline. So now, why did I mention that? Why do we care whether these are nonpolar or polar? The reason why is because knowing that information will t tell you where the receptor for that hormone will be. If something is nonpolar, then it can diffuse across a plasma membrane. So the receptors for steroids, the receptors for steroids will be inside of the cell. Because the steroids, being that they are nonpolar, they can just diffuse from the outside of the cell into the inside. But peptide or polypeptide hormones or amino acid derivatives that are polar, they won't travel through that hydrophobic space that's in the plasma membrane. So these guys, their receptors are on the outside of the cell. They're on the cell surface. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. So, what actually happens when that hormone binds its receptor? Receptor. So, this thing called a signaling cascade occurs, which is basically a signaling cascade is basically just a series of steps caused by a hormone binding event. So a hormone binds a receptor, it causes a series of steps to occur. So uh, those series of steps, they can do different things. They can either alter enzyme activity. So there are enzymes in our cells, right? So that they can make them more or less active or inhibit or activate them. That could change what's going on in our cells. Another thing that these signal cascades can do is they can alter gene transcription. So um, if we have DNA that can be turned into RNA, um, we might do more or less gene transcription of a particular gene uh, if a certain hormone causes that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there, this brings us to this idea of signal transduction. And I've written out the definition here. It says the process by which an extracellular signal is converted and amplified into a cellular response. Okay, that's all kinds of fancy terms, whatever. The whole idea is that, is that something from outside of the cell comes to a cell and triggers a response in that cell. 
that's what signal transduction is. So signal transduction usually involves this thing called a second messenger. So the first thing that comes to my mind when when someone tells me that this process involves a second messenger is, well, there's got to be a first messenger, right? You can't have a second one if there's no first one. And that is the case, right? The first messenger is the actual hormone, right? Or whatever that extracellular signal is. The hormone that's coming to bind the cell initially, uh, or bind the receptor, for that bind the the cell's receptor that's the first messenger so in our case we're talking about hormones being those initial first messengers those things initially arrive to the target cell those are the first messengers now the second messengers what are those things those are molecules that are made inside the cell and they're made in response to the first messenger so here, a molecule made inside the cell in response to the hormone binding event, at least in our case. Now, why is that significant? Usually, these second messengers, they have some sort of impact on the acti activity of the cell, right? As far as what we mentioned up here, we mentioned that they could alter enzyme activity or alter gene expression. Now, they're usually created in high or large amounts and that's significant and the reason why is because we think about the second messengers being created after one hormone binding event so one hormone binds and then many 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 second messengers are created so these many second messengers can go on and uh, go on and activate or inactivate certain things in the cell and because many second messengers are made because they're made in higher large amounts they can amplify the signal. Essentially, one hormone binding event can trigger a great response because the second messengers amplify that signal. I hope that was a good brief introduction to uh, cell signaling. We'll talk about more details in the future. One last thing, I'm a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moofuniversity at gmail.com and see the description below for more details. Thank you for watching.